There's a lot of interest in epigenetics at the moment, um, and it's probably going to change the way we think about drug development. Can you comment on uh, drug design and development and how you think we might have to shift thinking to account for the new knowledge from epigenetics? Yes, uh, drug design and development in general is becoming harder and harder and more and more expensive, and partly that's because some of the easier diseases have been solved or partly attacked. Now we are attacking more complex diseases like cancer, Alzheimer's, and diabetes, arthritis. These are very complicated diseases with multiple factors, and undoubtedly epigenetics is one of them. And because it's an emerging science, in some cases we don't have enough knowledge right now to design the drug. Some of these epigenetic targets are only now being identified within the last five or six years even. And typically the drug discovery process takes about 10 to 15 years from start to finish. So there's still a long way to go in terms of uh, bringing these things into clinical uh, therapeutics for the patient. Yes, and do you um, um, see anything kind of uh, on the horizon in terms of um, a, a leap in understanding that will help accelerate that uh, the drug design and, and development for epigenetic targets? Well, I think there's a concerted effort by people all over the world working in epigenetics, and just the uh, data that we are generating is broadly helping us to mm. and make, making a big shift in the way we think about these targets and how we approach them. Yeah. And the nice uh, consequence is that although epigenetic drug discovery is fairly new, it has kind of leapfrogged some of the other more traditional areas. So we have four epigenetic drugs on the market already, approved for cancer, and quite possibly some of these drugs and others that come out will be repositioned. There's evidence to show that epigenetic drugs have positive effects in various other disorders like uh, neurodegenerative disorders, inflammation, even infectious diseases. So you might be able to fine tune an epigenetic drug for any therapeutic indication. And some of these uh, drug discovery programs uh, are blossoming. Every major pharmaceutical company now has a research unit focused only on epigenetics. So that has to bear fruit at some point. Mm -hmm. And in both Europe and the UK, uh, sorry, uh, Europe and the US, we have small companies that work only on epigenetics. And to just give one example of something that has coming out on the horizon, there's a program uh, initiated by GlaxoSmithKline with input from a proteomics company in Germany called Cellzome and also collaborations with academics in the University of Oxford who obtained X-rays, crystal structures of these epigenetic targets, and clinical input from a group in Harvard, all working together. And they now have a drug candidate that is going to go into phase one clinical trials. And from start to finish, and this is a novel target, so there's never been any drug against this uh, target before. From start to finish, it has taken about two years. And this is a good example of the link between genetics and epigenetics. This is uh, going to be used against uh, AML, uh, midline leukemia, which is a rare form of cancer. And it arises because at the genetic level, there's a chromosomal change. There's a chromosomal the switch in mutation. And the consequence of that genetic change is that there's an epigenetic change. And this particular protein gets overexpressed. And they now have an inhibitor that will block that effect, and it's uh, going to go into patients right now. And this is a disease that traditionally has been incurable, for which patients have very poor prognosis and survival rates. So it will be fantastic uh, to see that happen. And I think we will see more and more success stories from epigenetics. This is just the uh, tip of the iceberg.